not for kids. I'm for adults out there whose kids are obsessed with farts. I mean, she puts the big T in shrimp. In your sexiest voice, sing me a song that will really turn me on. You're not talking about murder. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let the sideshow begin. Parton body double only at the Jim Rose Circus Sideshow. Oh, and there's a balcony. He can do Shakespeare from. You're not looking. You're not looking. You don't get your money's worth if you don't look. Look at that. I think he's gonna lactate. I think he's gonna lactate. Oh, oh, oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. That must really hurt. From the Jim Rose Sideshow, that is, in fact, Mr. Lefto, ladies and gentlemen. Just a taste of what you have to look forward to. A lot of people didn't realize, actually, that uh, I worked in the circus for a little while before I started here on Talk Soup. Not a huge change, actually, but uh, I was sort of the one-man contortionist. In fact, let me see, I still got a little bit of the ability to... Everything was... Oh! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm not real proud of it but it was a living. On this Monday's show, Joan will be saying, bring on the beefcake. She'll be auditioning Playgirl Centerfold. Please tune in to that excitement. Ooh. From Los Angeles, California, this is E. You can't spell repeat without it. Entertainment Television. Greg Kinnear back with you, bringing you an entire week's worth of mischief and mayhem and just kookiness, thrill-packed into one entire hour. It is the Talk Soup weekend. Going to have a good show for you today. Coming up, it's blondes versus brunettes. We've also got an interview with Barney's chain-smoking evil twin, Blarney. He's, uh, he's back making the talk show rounds, as it turns out. Incidentally, is Mr. Poobah still around from the Joan River show? Ho! The boss says he's the hottest man in town. His girlfriend says he gives hot kisses. A little barbecued tongue is always nice for lunch. Mr. Poobah, that's who that is. What is going on on Joan Rivers? Even without the bushy Fu Manchu mustache, Tony would be a unique individual, no question about that. Yes, America. He gets his jollies watching his wife get intimate with other men. Usually the guys involved have no idea. Tony is lurking and off in some cheese closet watching them perform. As Jenny Jones found out Tony and his wife feel this kinky pastime actually brings them closer together. Yeah. I just took him in the bedroom. We had sex. Took him home. Came back home. And he was waiting for me. And you're back there watching from another room. First of all... I can't really remember that time if I watched or not, but go ahead. Um, wouldn't you be afraid? I mean, this, if you're t not telling this guy, what if you got caught? What if he heard you or saw you? Were you afraid of that? Well, yeah, that thought crossed my mind. That's why I didn't really, you know, attempt to watch too much or anything. I basically just stayed in the other room and waited for him to leave. And why do you do it? What, what's, wh it's what exciting is it? to me. It makes, our, it makes our sex And exciting for you, Monica. Oh, yeah, very. I mean, is, the ex is the excitement for you that, is the excitement that you're with a new man or that you're being watched or is it the fear of being caught even? Uh, actually, it's like a combination of all of them. One, that he doesn't, that he doesn't know that, well, knows that I'm doing this, that with, um, two, that the sex is great. Mm -hmm. Three, the sex afterwards is the best. I mean... Oh. So, oh, wait a minute, after you, after you do this, then you have sex together? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the best part about it. <laughs> okay. You know, the best part about it for me is that unless they do another talk show, we'll never have to see them again, right? It's just... Bye-bye. 
Monday, Jenny will reunite men and women who had exciting but brief love affairs before circumstances tore them, tore them apart. One Night Stands, revisited. That'll be Monday on Jenny Jones. Well, when her daughters were a little younger, Gloria used to put them to bed these days. She lets various young men tuck them in, talking about Tricia and Audra. They are attending high school right now. They're only 14 and 15 years old. Now, Gloria doesn't mind, apparently, that her daughters are doing things under the roof. This attitude irritated one of Jane Whitney's other guests who lost her virginity at home and became a teenage mother as a result. Take a look at this highlight, Jane Whitney. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing it. So what did you want? Your mother to say, hey, Tracy, stay a virgin till you get married? No, not stay a virgin till I get that's, married. That's, you're not in reality with that. I don't think too many people do that. But not to sit up there and say, well, okay, if, if you're going to do it, do it in my house. Not only was I disrespecting myself, but I was disrespecting my mother. But, yeah. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. It ain't no man, and the man, the, these boys that they having sex with don't have respect for their parents. Because if they did, right. they would not, she moaning and groaning in her mother in her bed. She moaning and groaning, come on. Hey, her mother's right in the bed. But in the first place, if Tracy's mother would have been the kind of parent that she could have talked to, that maybe she wasn't educated. Just because you have, just because you educate her, that don't mean, I've heard she my daughter hey, and brothers have that my don't fingers mean, around She can't get pregnant. Yeah, you ain't that you mean, just because you're talking to her, you're not preventing her from doing it. I'm not saying she's not going to get pregnant. What are you saying then? I'm but saying I'm she saying. does I get, get pregnant. Tracy, I'm not going to be one of these parents that's going to go, oh, oh my God. Because you can do it. You, you know like, what's going to happen. Like I thought she was You can do it. Right. You sent her out there to be a teenage mother. That's exactly what you're doing. It is the highlight of Jane Whitney. Tracy was unable to convince Gloria to change her child-rearing ways. On the show on Monday's program, Jane hears from a husband who says he was framed and thrown in the slammer by a police chief. With designs on his wife, guess who Johnny Law is sleeping with now? Be afraid, be very afraid. Coming up, a sister-in-law is shocked and amazed, and Barney's evil twin steps into the slime light. Uh, Blarney? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to have a, a real serious discussion with you. Blaze, it's another scorching weekly wrap-up. Greg Kinnear's still with you, and I'm happy to report it's... Time for the Talk Soup Quote of the Week. From the Jenny Jones Show, the quote is from a woman who's skeptical about the job possibilities for her daughter's boyfriend, and she said as much on Jenny's show. Take a look at this. How's he going to support her? He said, I'll move back to Dixon, and I'll get a job in Dixon, and Jacob can go to school. There are no gay strip joints in Dixon. <laughs> That's true, you know. There are none. Anyway, this week, Jerry Springer heard from moms and dads who say their children have a great big purple dinosaur on their backs. That's right, these kids, they're, they're addicts. Barney addicts, that is. <laughs> Parents in question say the sound of Barney's goofy laugh makes their skin ooze and crawl, get a strange film on it. Plus, they hate the way he rips off nursery rhymes and adds his own saccharine lyrics. One person, or creature, who shares these sentiments is Barney's evil twin. You know him. I know him. Blarney. Blarney? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's hard for me to have a, a real serious discussion with you, but... Um, Go for it. Why are you... Why are you the... You're the evil twin? Yes, I'm uh, the unknown evil twin brother of Barney. Uh, I was born 69 million years ago in the Bronx. I used to get into trouble. Now I'm trying to go straight. I'm basically a purple partier. I've traveled all around the world and the universe, and I just got back from L.A. I hated L.A. because being a combination of red you, and blue... Do you run it? I now, wasn't liked by the Crips or the blood. So they okay. both shot at me. <laughs> okay, now, coincidentally, sitting in our audience, and I, I just noticed you here... <laughs> Hey, Barney. Now, no, well, let me, this is not, let me make that clear, because there's a bevy of attorneys outside. This is not Barney. This is a Barney look-alike. 
And if you could look like anyone, why you'd want to look like Barney is beyond me. But you are right. If you would stand up for Barney look-alike, so that people understand. Okay. B let me just ask Barney. Do k little kids come up to you and get really upset? No, you know, I'm not for kids. I'm for adults out there whose kids are obsessed with Barney. Oh. One of Jerry's other guests on the show is a gentleman who's actually formed a I Hate Barney secret news letter that people can order. And this Blarney little dinosaur really surprised us here at Talk Soup when later in the program he started doing impersonations, did a fabulous Jack Nicholson from the film Five Easy Pieces. I don't know if we have Now that. all you have to do is hold the chicken, bring me the toast, give me a check for the chicken salad sandwich, and you haven't broken any rules. I mean, he sounds just like him. On Jerry's show this Tuesday, some handsome male models square off against a group of average guys who will... Who will Jerry's female guests prefer? That'll be Tuesday. Well, Jody, this next woman you're about to meet is a woman with a big secret. No, she's not a transsexual or transvestite, and she doesn't think she's from another planet, nothing like that. I'll give you a little hint. She refused to let her sister-in-law do her hair and makeup before her recent wedding. That's such a little tip. Up next, Montel helps Jody come clean with that same sister-in-law and all of America about her secret. Take a look at this. Well, Fran, the reason why, um, when you asked if you could do my hair on that particular day, and remember we were in the restaurant the other day and we were talking about cutting Joe's hair and you asked me if I cut my own hair? <laughs> well, Fran? Oh, get lost. No. <laughs> Get lost. No, stop. <laughs> uh, I didn't do it just for Montel, honest. <laughs> well, now, wait, you better explain this yeah, to I don't, her so I she don't understands. Get it. Well, <laughs> when we were talking about my business and how I got into doing what I do, right? I'm a dermologist. I do micro pigment implantation, which is the permanent cosmetics, which I have done. My, my eyebrows and my eyeliner, since I have none, are permanent. And I am a clinical counselor and went back to school to do that, right, to help right, people right, like yeah. myself. Okay. So the car accident, just I have alopecia, it shocked my system oh. so bad that it was on my 20th birthday and I just started losing hair in clumps. And as a matter of fact, when I met Joe, my husband, he didn't know for two months. He didn't know for two months that I didn't have my I'm in shock. <laughs> I'm really in shock. Now, you know, the rest of your family doesn't know this yet. Right. Well, none of, nobody knows. Oh, I will bet you in about another five minutes you'll be getting a phone call. <laughs> Imagine Mr. Mr. Lifto's gotten a few strange phone calls this week from family and friends. When she was 20, Jody was in a very serious car accident. As a result, she contracted a rare form of alopecia. On this Tuesday show, Montel will meet moms who think their sons are dating tramps. The flus in question will also have equal, equal time. You don't suppose it's ratings month here, do you? When we come back, a UFO abductee claims she's being harassed by the military. You'll hear the whole story, and a gay hooker prepares for fatherhood. Jamie, you do want to marry him? Yes. He wants to marry you? What's going to happen if they get married? Is this... He will never marry my daughter over my dead body. Well, if you overlook the fact he encouraged his fiance to run away from home at the age of 15, then got her pregnant, that, that he's making a living now stripping in gay bars, and that, oh yeah, sometimes he sleeps with strange men for money. If you can put all that out of your mind, just get it out. James is great son-in-law material. But don't take my word for it. Check out this highlight from Jenny Jones. So what's happening now? Jamie, you do want to marry him? Yes. He wants to marry you? What's going to happen if they get married? Is this... He will never marry my daughter over my dead body. How's he going to support her? He said, I'll move back to Dixon, and I'll get a job in Dixon, and Jacob can go to school. There are no gay strip joints in Dixon. <laughs> You being as promiscuous as you are, aren't you afraid of having an AIDS baby, or have you been tested? I've been uh, tested. Has mm -hmm. he been tested? Uh, I guess you weren't practicing test. safe sex if you got pregnant. You weren't uh, practicing safe no, sex. No, it was, it was a plan. It, it was, was a the plan. Ba the baby yeah. was planned. The baby was planned? It, it was planned. <laughs> it was, by both of you? By both of us. We both wanted it. 
And he did not want to marry her when I called him. When, you see, it's like her mom, her mom is, I mean, I can't talk to her. I don't, I can't go up there without dealing with her mom or her stepfather. Her, my husband will kill him if he ever comes around our house again. My husband would not come with us today because he would kill him. He will. <laughs> You're applauding? All right. Wow, it is hard enough to get a father's approval in marriage these days, let alone if you're working in a gay strip bar. That's the highlight of Jenny Jones there, moms who hate their son-in-laws in this Tuesday show. Jenny gets to know women who can't stand, can't stand the guys their best pals are dating. Are these ladies spiteful third wheels or loyal friends? You be the judge, jury, and executioner, if you will, Tuesday. Leah Hadley is a true UFO magnet. She was first abducted by aliens from another galaxy at the tender age of three. Since then, she's been attracting extraterrestrials like flies. To make things even more complicated, she now has to deal with the meddling of the U.S. military in her life, abducting her. As she told the Joan Rivers show, she thinks they, too, are hot on her trail. The military have, have also abducted you. That's correct. Our military. We're that's not talking correct. about, like, the spaceship military. Why would, what, what is that all about? Okay, now that's correct. I do want to make it clear that I don't feel any animosity toward our military and government in general. I don't. But there are some individuals within these organizations who have caused me more distress than the aliens have. Uh, when I started remembering things and first wanted to undergo hypnotic regression to fill in the details and remember the rest of what happened to me, I started being followed, my no uh, noises started up on my telephone, um, I started being watched in restaurants by military looking people, and once I underwent hypnosis the first day back home, back at work, I saw a man snooping in my car. Um, I was able to trace his license plate. He works for a company that works on the space shuttles. Um, I've been greeted at the airport when I've gone to undergo hypnotic regression by a man who told me he knew I was there to investigate extraterrestrials. I was sent a patch of the space shuttle Endeavor and with an invitation to go out onto a base. I refused and an article in the newspaper the next day said that Armed guards were stationed around the shuttle with instructions to kill on sight. Yeah, those NASA guys are nuts. So, another one of Jones' guests. And listen, I was a little skeptical about this whole thing until Ellen Crystal, the author of the book *Silent Invasion*, actually came out and shared some UFO footage with the audience. I don't know if we have that. This uh, August 6, 1992, there was a major sighting in Lower New York State, and this is how covered up the, the media is. I tried to get attention to this. We think a thousand people may have seen three or four ships um, flying across lower New York State. Mm -hmm. And as if that weren't enough in and of itself, the woman then produced footage of the actual commander of the alien armada, which freaked us all out here at E, I can tell you that. On Tuesday's show, Joan's going to be getting the latest gossip from the country's top tattletales, including writers from both Star and Us magazine. Sadly, we will be returning in a moment with a battle of the sexes that gets way out of hand, and in case that doesn't catch your attention, an irate woman will be talking trash about her sister. But you said she came on to some of the people at your wedding. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was my brother, Michael. Ran him down. Vicky chases anything child that has a pair of pants with a zipper. Taking all the most driving, compelling, visceral moments of the talk shows and put them all together in a one-hour program for you. This is the Weekend Edition. Greg Kinnear still with you. Perhaps it's the sparkling conversation that attracts him. Statements like, yeah, oh yeah, and take it off, baby. Maybe, maybe he goes for the watered-down gin and cokes. Just don't insinuate that Juan is obsessed with strip joints because of the beautiful naked women parading around. As he explained to Jenny Jones, that has nothing to do with it. I don't go to look at the women, because if, oh, if I want somebody to dance for me, I'll go home and get her to dance for me. You don't go to strip bars to look at women? No, because I can get her to dance for me if I want to dance. But then why do you go? Just for the fun of it. I mean, it's fun. I mean, really. Which would you, which would... Juan, you're really not doing anything wrong, okay? What you are doing wrong, as far as going to the strip bars, you're not doing anything wrong. But 
I mean, you're sitting here saying you're not going for the women, that you don't look, you watch other just guys react. You're saying the truth, right? You know, come on, man. We're men. We're pigs, man. We look for women, okay? <laughs> Right? You know, we, there are some funny things have come up. Your wife is not smiling. And she did say, and she said to me before the show, that there is going to be an ultimatum. It's either going to have to be you, you, uh, uh, the wife, or the strip bars. Are you willing to make a choice? No, I think we'll talk about it a little bit more. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to put Betty, it is that spot? acceptable to you? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. You tell him. He didn't listen to me. You tell him. Which is it? Me or the strip joint? I wouldn't make that choice right now. Juan, I think you just did, buddy. Juan says he visits these clubs three, four, five, six times a week. On this Wednesday show, some wives confront their luring husbands. These guys are apparently constantly, constantly dealing with that troubling fixation of wandering eyes. Well, Victoria won't sleep with just anyone, right? Wrong. Actually, according to her sister Cheryl, Victoria spends more time in the sack than the bag boy at your local grocery store. Vicki Lake was happy to invite Cheryl and her husband to perform a bit of character assassination at her sister's expense, and that went something like this. Ricky Lake. Now, has she ever come on to you, Wayne? I won't let her. <laughs> <laughs> but you said she came on to some of the people at your wedding. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was my brother, Michael, ran him down. Vicky chases anything, child, that has a pair of pants with a zipper. <laughs> okay. It don't have a pair of pants and a zipper. She right behind them. She doesn't. Vic, trampless. I mean, she puts the big T in trample. The yeah. big T. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Victoria is so trampless. Listen to this audience. She, this is her sister. She changes men like she changes underwear. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 Wait a minute. Scratch that. <laughs> she wears none. <laughs> she wears none. Very much. Now, Cheryl, do you actually think that she, she gets paid for having sex? I'm not sure. I don't speak on subjects I have no knowledge of. So I cannot say she might. <laughs> if the shoe fits. She might wear it. Hmm. If the shoe fits, why shouldn't she wear it? Is our thinking here, anyway. Tom, you were commenting on that earlier. That is the highlight of Ricky. Incidentally, uh, what is trampless all about? Give me the dictionary over there, John. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see here. Let's see. <laughs> Tramplees, tramplet. Oh, here it is, trampless. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Look, guys. Easy woman. Silent film, not starring Charlie Chaplin. And final definition, miniature trampoline. I guess it wouldn't be a trampoline at all if it were trampless, though, right? Yeah. Wednesday, Ricky meets women who claim they know everything there is to know about guys. Authorities on men, that'll be Wednesday. Lacey Lawrence, or Lawrence Lacey, feels that the male gender is getting a bum rap these days. He thinks men are are often depicted as insensitive, domineering, overbearing, pushy, headstrong, unreasonable, obnoxious pigs. And in order to debunk these stereotypes and speak out on men in general, he came on The Shirley Show and instead threw a hissy fit. Men are not only oppressed in their custody suits, their visitation, okay, and health care, Right? All, most monies that are still, which we know men make more money, is, right? Money that goes into health care for breast cancer, which is a wonderful thing. No, and men, and, wait a minute. Hold your horses now. You, take, you told before, you, I cut you off, you didn't like it. Now, I don't like it, okay? All right? Now, all right? Dominating most of the okay. Time. The monies that went into research for breast cancer, et cetera, came from men's tax monies, 80% of it, in the United States anyway. We know this. Men make more money. Men love women. women. We've always loved our women. We have fought for our women oh. and our why children. Why did we have to fight to get the money? Why did we have to fight our hard for the money? Larry, Larry, you have to fight so hard you know,
at the same rate from prostrate and colon I, cancer, I'm gonna but nobody wants to do, spend on. any money on Larry, research. Larry, no one is going to listen to you. Not in this audience With and this not With this mouth in over here? Who the hell could? And when you think about it, Lawrence is the authority on mouths. Oh, yeah. Who's that? <laughs> Lawrence belongs to a group known as the National Organization of Men. Great. This is our representative, right? A uh, woman he was snarling at is Diane Welsh. She is of the National Organization of... That's right. On this Wednesday's show, Shirley asked the provocative question, Is... Is it incest when stepchildren fall in love? She'll answer that on Wednesday. We'll stay upwind of Laura if you don't want to fall in love. She's one of many satisfied customers wearing the new aphrodisiac perfume, Athena Pheromone 1013. I'm sure you've heard of it, or at least smelt it. As Montel Williams learned, this fragrance completely transformed her love life overnight. Get a whiff of this. We went out on Halloween evening, and I was wearing the stuff, and he smelled it, and he noticed it was a different perfume. He said, what are you wearing? And I said, oh, I don't know. What do you think? And he just smelled me all night, on and on and on. By the, by the end of the night, oh, my gosh, he came up to me and said, I love you, and I want to marry you. Really? And I was like, He was an ex at the time. I'm sorry? He was an ex at the time. Yeah, he was an ex. We were just friends. So it was kind of a shocker, and I thought, well, maybe this stuff does work. Really? What? It's coming back around. You know what? Because, you know what? It's really funny, because that same ex-boyfriend called me up about this smell. He's, like, completely gone nuts again. As a matter of fact, Ralph, come on out here. <laughs> and, and, Ralph, you hadn't seen her for how long when you saw her and got that whiff? Oh, about a month. About a month. You got the whiff. Now, <laughs> now, you spent some time with her, had a great evening. Right, right. But you wanted to say something to her on national television. Why don't you go ahead and tell her what you want to say? Laura? Sweetie. Like I said to you the other night, will you marry me? Oh, my God, it's Sweetie Lordy Mercy. <laughs> Hotel, can we take a bride? <laughs> There's the kind of answer that instills confidence when you ask somebody to marry you. Can we take a break? Mm, that is the highlight of Montel. Incidentally, the love potion she's raving about is Pheromone 1013, the love scent that's sweeping the nation. In fact, I believe Talk Soup Cologne is going to be on the market in just a couple of weeks. They've already started some ads for it. We're kind of jazzed about it. We're going to take a quick break and be back with the world's friendliest mom. Plus, you're going to meet a woman with not three husbands, not four husbands, not five husbands, just two. Talk Soup Cologne, for the man who just wants to be left alone. Now available in new head cheese fragrance. Like a giant food processor whipping TV highlights into a frothy, talk soup, syrupy substance. It's the weekly wrap-up. I'm Greg Kinnear. Jenny is an extremely congenial older woman who can't seem to keep her mitts off her daughter's boyfriends. It's a little strange, isn't it? Currently, she's living with a guy, or currently if you prefer, who previously dated her girl, Nikki, for I guess about three years. And the strange thing is, this isn't the first time that mom's put the moves on a potential son-in-law. Jenny's other daughter, Christine, also lost her boyfriend to her. As Christine told Jenny Jones, it all started with an impromptu crazy slumber party. I can talk to my mom about anything, you know, uh -huh. including guys and stuff like that. So I think I might have mentioned something about, you know, maybe getting together with this guy or something like that. And she's like, oh, my God, you know. It's hard to, to uh, when, when it's your mother sitting up there, it's really hard to, uh, to be confrontational because it's hard for me to, I can tell other people how I feel, but it's really hard to say it to your mom. But she got into bed with you both. That's what you told our producers, right? Well, there was only one bed in the house. It was a big bed. 
And he was staying the night. And he was staying the night. And I think basically it, <clears throat> it wasn't so she could do anything with him, but she just, she wanted to um, sleep in between us or have him in, sleep in between us to make sure that we didn't do anything. <laughs> Do you didn't find that unusual? No, not at all. Me and my mom are like best friends. <clears throat> that is very strange to me, but <laughs> this was not unusual behavior around your house then? No. My mom is just a very outgoing person. <laughs> no, no, no. She seems like a pretty nice, down-to-earth, discreet woman. In Bizarro World... On this Thursday show, Jenny will hear from Bert and Lonnie's original ex-spouses. They'll attempt to shed light on the messiest breakup since Woody and Mia. What is Bizarro World, anyway, do you suppose? Well, Leela, Leela has two beds to sleep in, two homes to live in, and two husbands to call her own. That's right, this double-barrel bigamist divides her time between dose men and excuse me for being bilingual there, but she calls Ray, her husband of 42 years, her city man, while Jim, her common-law hubby, gets the title Mountain Man. Sure, you have a lot of questions out there, so let's see if Jerry Springer can get some answers. You've got two husbands. Right. Why beat around the bush? bush? Who, uh, who were you with last night? Which one? Who did I sleep with? Yes. <laughs> I can't tell them apart in the dark. <laughs> I slept with him. He's my husband. Ray. Ray's my husband, yeah. Yeah. And, Ray, you, you seem like a pretty liberal guy. But you've been married, what, 40, how many years? 42 years. You've been married for 42 years. You have kids, right? Right. Ray. There's another guy that's sometimes sleeping in your house with your wife. Mm -hmm. That's okay? Fine with me. Why'd you marry? Why? As long as it's not on my night. <laughs> <laughs> that being the night he's not in shock therapy, as it turns out. Ray and Jim say they are actually best of friends. Leela says she could never be forced to choose between the two of these big kahunas on jerry's show this thursday he'll be meeting a man whose wife lost 80 pounds and became a cheating hussy he's now helping to raise another man's baby well these next guests from montel williams are appearing under assumed names plus they're wearing disguises that usually means there's some deep dark secret that they're trying not to reveal and i don't uh I don't want to tip the cards here, but I will say that their story is straight out of the pages of modern psychology and the Victoria's Secret catalog. Here now! I love that arm roll. Talk soup clip of the week. I have a fantasy that, uh... <laughs> this is hard. It's hard. Okay, well, maybe I'll help you some. Every day, Lisa goes to work, right? Mm -hmm. You stick around a little bit after she leaves to go to work. I go an hour later. Hour later. What do you do when she goes off to work? Uh, I dress up in your clothes. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like well, wait, just, just give us an example of this, because I know you kind of bought it with you here. Is that oh. what you <laughs> Lisa. Tom told us that, you know, you, you, I guess, are a beautician, right? You work in cosmetics or something? What do you do? Yes. Okay, so every now and then you would experiment on Tom. Right. Do you, did you know that the experimentation <laughs> got to this point? No, I didn't. <laughs> so not only do you wear just her brassiere, but you wear her panties, her, her nylons, yeah. garter belts. Yeah. Everything in Everything. her closet is fair game for you. Everything. When she's out the door. Right. <laughs> Tom said that when he was a child, his mother used to dress him up like a little girl and spank him when he was bad. By the way, is it just me or... Now, on this Thursday show, Montel gets to know the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. They'll be singing, dancing, giggling, jiggling, whatever else they do. That'll be Thursday on Montel. They're back. In the spirit of community service, we are now scanning... 
Some highlights from public access programs. Come on, little pat on the back for ourselves. That's uh, easy, big guy. That's how we came across this highlight featuring Kenny Morris. He's a man who calls himself Mr. Traffic, does a show out here in the Los Angeles area, and here's Kenny now explaining why it's not a good idea to get stoned and drive. Mr. Traffic. And welcome to Ask Mr. Traffic. Uh, hello, Mr. What's your name? My name is Flash. Hi. Uh, I have a quick question. Go. Wondering, is it illegal to drive while high under uh, the influence of marijuana? Thanks for the question. Being under the influence of marijuana is the exact same as if you were under the influence of a Long Island iced tea. A DUI is a DUI is a DUI. And, you know, I've had people in class here, again, total brain donors who go, Hey, man, let me tell you something. I drive better when I'm under the influence of some pot. So, you know, I, I don't drink alcohol, man, but, you know, a little doobie never hurt anyone. Yeah, that's called an idiot also. If you're under the influence of marijuana, you are just as liable for a DUI. And by the way, you might be interested to know that the Beverly Hills Police Department have a new test to see if you're on marijuana. They wave a pack of Twinkies in your face. Works every time. So you see, all you have to do is ask Mr. Traffic. That's Kenny Morse. He's out here on Century Cable in L.A. Coming up, how do you like your dinosaur eggs? Over easy or scrambled? Plus, an angry ex-wife tells off three man-stealing mistresses next. A great big talk soup hello to everybody who's not watching out there. We're back right now. According to the talk soup pop psychology primer, there are many different ways to deal with anger, sublimation, denial, confrontation, and, of course, displacement would be a popular way. That's... That's when you can't scream at the person you're really mad at, so you pick a likely substitute. And in your mind, the old switch out. This next highlight from the Montel Williams show is a classic example of displacement in action. Here's an angry ex-wife ending her hostilities on a group of mistresses, much like the home wrecker who broke up her marriage. Thank you very much for being here on the show, man. How many kids did you have? I have two beautiful children, and because of these sluts, that I lost my husband. And Jeff, and Jeff, what happened? What happened? Well, the girl that he went out with, he was working with, he was traveling with her, and I found out through a hotel room that they were together. And on my mother's birthday, I went to the airport, he was coming back from a trip, and she was there. I confronted her and I told you, bitch. My husband alone. Why didn't you pick on your husband? Why didn't you jump? I called on my husband. Well, you and I told them that's because you, wife, you ladies, that my wife. children are suffering. I have two beautiful children. What about you? What, what, what about, about you? Me? What was your part in this? What is my point? Were you the part of your wife? Were you the one of your women came into my husband's life? I was married 14 well, years. I'm looking for her husband. You were doing the right thing. You were doing the right thing. Your husband was the one that was married. He's the one that everybody should be angry at. He's the one that I'm angry about, at him, too. Not me. But it's because of you women walking into his life. We were happy until you walk into their life and screw my children. How are we not walking into his head? I no. tell she it. She was happy. Oh, your wife. 14 years. I let Amon tell Williams all of the mistresses are dating boyfriends or married men, and they all believe that sooner or later they're going to end up with them later former mistresses came on and said it probably is not going to work that way. Coming up on the next Montel Williams, it's platonic relationships. Can women and men really be friends? You decide. That'll be Friday, Montel Williams. Hey, got a little letter for you. Try and answer these. Well, we try and answer it. <laughs> we try and answer these every once in a while. This is from Tonya, all the way out there in Tulsa. Wrote us a very nice letter, and in the letter asks, Greg, is this the kind of work you've always dreamed of doing? And uh, thank you for the letter, Tonya, and no, it's not. The, the real dream job that I had took place uh, a couple years ago before I actually started Talk Soup, and it was uh, fulfilling and intellectually stimulating, pretty much everything a guy could ask for. Mm. We're going to take a quick break right now. We'll be back in a moment with one last clip are dinosaurs back in town? You'll find out after this. Woo! Ow! Ow! <laughs> I just don't think.
think she'd understand. You heard it. Wrapping up our high fiber diet, it's the weekend edition of Talk Soup. These next guests from the Jane Whitney show may have seen Jurassic Park one too many times. Or uh, who knows, they could be actually telling the truth. You never know about these things, I suppose. In the Weekly World News, they printed this story some time ago. So actually, if you think about it, who am I to dispute it? The fact is, Frank and Camille claim they were digging around in a construction site, and one day they discovered some real-life dinosaur eggs. How did you find these, these eggs? Well, we're licensed uh, building contractors in Gardnerville, Nevada. It's a small, remote town at the base of the Sierra Mountains, Sierra Nevada Mountains. And in the process of our excavation, we came across a crusted over nodule that contained a nest of eggs. And uh, there was five, a total of five eggs in the nest, uh, three of which contained uh, live animals. All right, now what we're seeing up on the screen are shots that, Camille, you took? Yes, that's a picture I took of Frank um, holding one of the eggs that had not hatched. And what is this? This, 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 is, this is a picture of the, the creature that we accidentally, in the excavation, um, uh, broke open the egg. And this is the creature that was inside. I, he held it only for just a few minutes. And then it, I mean, it, well, it was actually dead at this time. But um, that's the picture I took. I got to tell you, the stench, uh, the, the, there was a very pungent odor when the egg was ruptured. And the animal that came out was covered in a, in a very uh, pungent, slimy, greasy type uh, embryonic fluid. Uh, the only reason I picked it up was for the, just to, to show the scale with relation to my out. hand and take the picture of it. The animal was covered in a very pungent, slimy, greasy, embryonic like fluid. Okay. Uh, that is the highlight of Jane. Actually, moments later, she brought on one of the dinosaurs that they had captured that was still alive, and he did a fantastic impersonation of Jack Nicholson from Five Easy Pieces. This is now amazing. Now all you have to do is hold the chicken, bring me the toast, give me a check for the chicken salad sandwich, and you haven't broken any rules. Wow. That is good. On this Friday show, Jane meets couples who say weight loss is destroying their marriages. He's half the man he used to be Friday. We're out of time, folks. That's the weekend edition. I'm Greg Kinnear. We'll see you back here Monday.